This video is a review of the chemical equilibrium chapter of the chemical thermodynamics and kinetics playlist. We start by defining the extent of reaction, where if we have some reactant in our reaction, the number of moles of that reactant at a given point in the reaction is equal to the number of initial moles minus its stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of the reaction. So the change in the number of moles of it is equal to negative its stoichiometric coefficient times the change in the extent of the reaction. These values would be positive if it were a product. And we define the Gibbs energy of reaction as the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to extent of the reaction, where the extent of reaction that we observe in the reaction is such that uh, we're going to minimize the Gibbs energy, as would be true of any process that occurs at constant temperature and constant pressure. So going through this derivation, we end up with what's called the equilibrium constant, where in terms of partial pressures, we get the partial pressure of each product to the power of each it, its stoichiometric coefficient in the numerator, and the same values for the reactants in the denominator. The values at equilibrium are called the equilibrium constant, and the values not at equilibrium are called the reaction quotient. So the standard Gibbs energy of reaction is equal to the negative gas constant times temperature, times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. And the equilibrium constant is not a function of pressure, it is only a function of temperature. And throughout this chapter, we express various equilibrium constants in terms of pressure, in terms of molarity, in terms of fugacity, in terms of activity. They all have the same structure, but with the various um, different quantities we mention here, and there's the interconversions between those two. All right, we explore Le Chatelier's principle, where the system will respond to some external perturbation so as to minimize the effect of that perturbation. If we have a system where the number of gas moles decreases in the products relative to the reactants, if we increase uh, the pressure, it will, we want to decrease the pressure, so the extent of reaction is going to go backwards to consume some moles of gas. If the pressure goes down, the opposite is going to happen. And if we have a situation where we have, let's see, this would be an exothermic reaction where we release heat to the surroundings. If the temperature is going to go up, then the extent of reaction is going to go down so we consume heat. If the temperature goes down, we're going to go forward in the reaction to produce heat to push to the surroundings. In each case, every effect is designed so as to minimize the effect of that external environmental perturbation. We can get the standard Gibbs energy by looking up the Gibbs energy of the products and Gibbs energy of the reactants. Uh, there are tables of these things with the standard Gibbs energy of formation of a lot of common uh, chemical substances in uh, textbooks, reference tables, other places. The Gibbs energy of our reaction is going to equal the standard Gibbs energy plus RT times natural log of the reaction quotient or equal to RT times the natural log of the ratio of the reaction quotient divided by the equilibrium constant. So if the reaction quotient is bigger than the equilibrium constant, our reaction is going to go backwards. If it's less than the equilibrium constant, it's going to go forwards. When it equals the equilibrium constant, we are at equilibrium, and the Gibbs energy of reaction is going to be zero. Since the Gibbs energy of reaction equals the enthalpy of reaction minus T times the entropy of reaction, the at the various temperatures, the sign of en entropy and enthalpy is going to determine whether or not we are spontaneous. Whenever our Gibbs energy is greater than zero, our reaction is going to go, I believe this should say backwards. There we go. When the Gibbs energy of reaction is positive, it goes backwards. When the Gibbs, reaction of, Gibbs energy of reaction is negative, it goes forwards. And that all depends on the relative signs of the uh, enthalpy and entropy at the given temperature. We can see how the equilibrium constant changes as a function of temperature by looking at the Van t Hoff equation, where there is a proportional relationship between the log of the uh, equilibrium constant and the inverse of the temperature, with the proportionality constant being the negative enthalpy of reaction divided by the gas constant. And lastly, the reason that we typically ignore um, solids and liquids in our equilibrium constants 
is because their activities are approximately one and approximately constant during any kind of reaction. That's because we go through and, de and, and derive that the natural log of the activity of any condensed phase system is approximately this value, which if our pressure is near one bar is going to be approximately zero, giving us an activity of approximately one, which is not going to change very much during the course of a reaction unless we have a substantial change to our temperature and or our pressure. Links to each of the individual videos in the on-screen annotations as well as in the description below.